Hello there. <clears throat> Today we're going to talk about ACP Control Observatory and basically going through the uh, preferences and the tabs, getting things kind of set up from the beginning. Um, we're using Sky X, Maxim DL6, and Focus Max 4. So let's bring up the ACP Observatory Control Software. So this is pretty much it. Now I want to say that there are a lot of video tutorials on the DC3 Dreams website and there's also a lot of other information but if that's not even enough then we can actually go into the help and bring up the help file and this is pretty much a massive book here there is just tons of information you can search on anything there's indexing uh, you can pretty much find anything there is to find and there's even uh, written uh, working uh, calculators in a sense um, so it's a it, it's very very helpful um, help document so this is what we look at when we first log in and when you first open ACP for the very first time it's going to ask you to enter a remote observatory name or a, a observatory name so you go into preferences and in the observatory, you'll actually put the name of your observatory. Mine's called Deep Sky Remote Observatory. That's what it is. You put the lat latitude and longitude and then the height in meters. Mine's already set up. <clears throat> now this horizon you can actually clear. And all you have to do is draw a new line at whatever elevation that you need um, your horizon to be. For example, uh, you may have it up high in the east and west and low in the south. Uh, I usually leave mine pretty much set here. But that's me. So and then on the telescope tab you can go ahead and actually um, uh, uh, type these in. Another, uh, another way of doing it and have ACP kind of read it, put it in there for you um, <clears throat> is to go under the telescope which you have to do anyways and you go into the setup here and you'll actually pick the um, ASCOM driver that you're using we're using the simulator so I will go ahead and choose the simulator and then you go into properties uh, the typical ASCOM stuff that you have and click OK now when you do that ACP is going to actually go ahead and um, connect to the mount and make sure it can actually do it. Okay, and this is just a Sky X thing with T-Point. So, um, in the real world, uh, then the preferences would come up. The simulator might be a different world. But in the camera, when we go to the setup, we're going to do the same thing. And it goes and attempts to connect to the camera. And then it's going to give you this message. And then this dialog comes up. Now oh, we can go ahead and get rid of this for now because that's just the camera. <clears throat> so this kind of what is what would happen in the uh, telescope as well. Okay, so we can actually change this if you don't want to leave it that way and put what maybe your telescope is. I have a GSO RC10. Uh, my uh, aperture is 250 millimeters. And my focal length is 2030-2032. Um, I do have a German equatorial mount. Uh, so um, this needs to be set. And then this flip settings here is kind of important. <clears throat> this pretty much is uh, information about what happens. How much can your mount get over the meridian without having problems. Things like that. Um, you can notice that here that it's set as a default to minus five. So in other words, if um, an exposure takes 10 minutes or 15 minutes, let's say, and it's gonna cross the meridian uh, before that exposure is done, ACP will actually turn off the tracking and wait for it to cross the meridian. Now, if your mount can actually go past the meridian, mine can, so I could put 10 minutes here. And then your mount needs at least five minutes to uh, do a flip. You can leave this pretty much the way it is because if it flips faster who cares, right? Um, I don't do anything with this. I leave these pretty much set at zero. 
Uh, again, you can look in the help file and you'll see these links help with this. That's extremely valuable. Okay, the next thing we're going to get into is um, on this tab set is the pointing correction. Now, the way the pointing correction works is ACP has its own uh, data point modeling and it works fantastic. I've actually used it and it's very easy to do. All you would do is just check this checkbox and once that's done, um, you can reset it now. It will set the model back to zero. And then um, let me go ahead and click OK here. Once that's done, then you're going to select a script to run. And the script you're going to run is actually train uh, corrector. Uh, and it, this actually uh, works very, very well. It'll ask you how many points you want to do. And it's, I put it in about 30, and it takes about an hour or so. <clears throat> OK, so that's the pointing. Now we'll go back to the imaging. So again, we can change this to what our camera is. I have a QSI CCD. Um, these settings are pretty much OK. Now the default here is normally 0, and, and that is actually your first uh, filter position in Maxim DL. Uh, most people have a luminous there, but if you wanted to say filter number 4 in your camera, then you would go 3 because it's indexed uh, minus 1. And I don't do much with this at all here. Again, this is all help stuff if you need it. The guiding here is pretty much all I really do here is just check the box. Now you can again go through the help file <clears throat> and determine what you want. For example, some people want, might want to not be happy with uh, one second ex guide star exposure. Sometimes people make it longer to compensate for poor scene conditions. So you can actually put like two seconds and your minimum guide exposure would be two seconds. Um, ACP uses a signal to noise um, algorithm to determine what is it, what is and what is not a good for guide star. So that works very well. Um, the plate solve information is what's used for pinpoint. Uh, ACP, of course, comes with pinpoint six. Um, and then you can pick whatever catalog you use. Um, and uh, this is generally a good one to pick on. Um, this is your general catalog. Now, you can also enable the all sky plate solving and I highly recommend that. Now this API key that's not required but I have found that it actually does a better job and faster actually just faster if you actually have one. So you can go to this website uh, create an account which is free and request an API key then you're ready to go. Okay so um, the autofocus tab uh, pretty much is pretty straightforward. Um, yes, I want to enable autofocus, and it's telling you that you, re you make sure that uh, everything's working okay. Now, you can actually select this autofocus if full with half max grows by a certain percentage. Now, if you do use this option, it's important to know that when you use ACP Planner, that you do not do any autofocusing in there because this is going to take, you can't do both. <clears throat> um, you can also tell it to force um, focus on a filter changing. Um, this is what I use, uh, Choir Star. Uh, Choir Star, in fact, Focus Max is very, very good. Now there's a test button here to actually test it to see how it works with ACP. But I have found that if you get a Choir Star working in Focus Max, okay, then this is just going to work. Okay. So this, these look local users are basically where your files are being stored when you're when you're running ACP from in inside your, the computer that it's running. If you're using uh, the web-based browser version, uh, the files would not be stored here. They would be stored in a user directory under the public folder. And again, the help file talks about that. <coughs> okay, so um, we want to go into uh, Here's your wedding, weather settings here, if you have a weather monitor. 
Um, now the servers here. This is uh, this is what you put. This is the information for if you want to use ACP as a web browser based, and that really is the reason you got the software in the first place, right? It's because that's yeah, it's just very very powerful. This is pretty much the IP address of the computer, and if it changes, then you need to update this as your as yourself. Now the default is port 80, and some things use port 80, so you may have a problem with that sometimes. Um, I use an external port um, that is programmed in my router, so I do it that way. <clears throat> if you you can act, if you if you are using ACP from internally, in other words, you're not going outside of um, the window, and I'll explain that a little bit later. Um, you need and you do have a conflict. You can just put in any number here, uh, 8080 for example would just work fine. And then you check this box, and this will enable it. Now, if you're also using an FTP server, then you can do this as well. Um, I recommend using Dropbox. That seems to work very well. Then, of course, you can set up a user. Now, the default user that comes with the application is here. Now, if you want to set up your own personal user, you can just click New, type in the name. And... Um, Put in whatever name you want, and then if I select this, you, you'll if I select this, you'll see it put a password here. Now, if that's really complicated for you to use, you can just type in your own password. <clears throat> the ones you need to check here, since you have the administrator, is this option, the script. And if you're not using FTP, you don't need this. But if you are, then you can check that um, and that. So now all the users are set up. <clears throat> This tab here is um, basically what, um, when you install ACP, sometimes you get this little birdie over here that talks to you. And if you don't really want that to happen, you can just uncheck this box. And as you can see, it is unchecked. So um, that's pretty much it with the preferences for the most part. So I click OK. And then um, to connect the telescope, once you're connected, you got it all set up, you just go to Telescope Connect. Um, and because the sky is connected, this will connect. And then uh, camera connect, and this cam this connects the camera. Okay. So this um, now, I, like I said, there's two ways to use HCP. You can go not log into the observatory and just go to any web browser, your phone or whatever, and you type in uh, an IP address. Either you set up some way or another or if you have your own router you can actually put a mapping in for your router and do it that way which is what I do. Uh, if you don't want to do it on the, from the outside world then this use web browser pretty much will um, do that. So when I click on it it will go ahead and bring up the uh, website eventually. And here we go. <clears throat> so here, here is your web interface right here. So here you can actually see, okay, there's the telescope. And if you, you know, you can actually shut down the telescope here. You can shut down the camera. And you notice the cooler's off. So I can actually click on this to turn on the cooler. And if you click on it again. Okay, so now the cooler's on. So now I can actually change the temperature here, like minus 10. Or if I put off, then that actually turns off the cooler. So, And I'm not going to talk about how to use the interface here. Uh, that will probably be another video. Although, if you go onto the DC3 Dreams website, he's already done all that for you and, and, and done it very well. So I recommend that. So let me close the browser. And we'll bring this back. From here, you can do a couple of things. Um, and one thing is this SLU or sync. You can actually go ahead and go SLU to any object if you want. Uh, for example, if you want to SLU to an alignment star, you can actually go ahead and SLU to one. Um, and then you just click go to. And then your, oh, your telescope would actually start moving, as you can see here.
once you're at that star then you can click on that and once you've got it centered then you would actually click sync do you want to sync on this star um, if you need to nudge anything it was just a little simple nudge and you put in the arc minutes on how much you want to nudge um, that's pretty much it for the most part um, one last thing I'll mention is if you are remote like I am and your telescopes lost there's this fantastic script and you'll never guess what it's called fine loss scope what fine loss scope does is it takes an all sky plate solve and syncs the telescope and you are now synced to the sky so you're good to go well that's about it so enjoy the day